In this navigation video, we're going to continue uh, what we did in the first one, uh, talk a little bit about bearings and compass readings, as well as uh, address a couple word problems. Uh, before we get to the first problem, uh, I want to quickly review. Uh, as mentioned, navigation tends to work instead of with XY coordinates, it works with north, south, east, west readings, compass bearings. And uh, here are a few quick examples. Um, as you can see, when you have a compass reading, of north 20 east it just uh, is what it basically is telling you you start at north and you go 20 degrees to the east this is east and this is west so you would go 20 degrees east and that is the direction from your starting point and of course if you had south 50 west instead of starting up to here at north you would start on the other side at south and you would head 50 degrees to the west this is a 50 degree angle and you would end up with a direction that way. So you can already see the subtle difference in geometry as you remember uh, when you have your XY coordinates and you have an angle in standard position if I said to you 40 degrees you would start at the x-axis and you'd move counterclockwise 40 degrees and end up here. Quite different from navigation and compass readings. Bearings are actually even another way to express direction and you always start at due north, which is zero, and you, instead of going counterclockwise, you want to make sure that you're going clockwise. So, for example, if you have 60 degrees, you start at zero north, this is north, and you start going 60 degrees, and you end up with an angle like that. So again, you're going clockwise, very different than geometry. Then, if you have 290 degrees, again, you start at zero, always, and you go clockwise, 90, 180, 270, and the direction from here is a direction of 290 degrees of a bearing. Okay, so uh, another important thing to remember is that bearings, uh, the direction matters uh, in relation between two objects. So for example, if we have an object A or a person A and person B, and we want to find the bearing from A to B, again, you start at north, which is here, and you start heading clockwise until you hit your direction. So in this case, if we pulled out a protractor, we could see that this is a bearing of roughly, looks about 60 degrees. From here to here, it's about 60 degrees. Okay, and that is A to B. If I said to you, what about B to A, it's not 60 degrees. Again, you have to start at the north and go clockwise until you hit your direction. So in this case, it would be, you can tell by the geometry, this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, alternate interior angles, 180, this would be a 240 degree angle. So you can see the difference is 180 degrees. And then finally, if you're given two objects and you want to find the bearing, for example, let's find the bearing from this ship to this port, uh, a good idea is to draw grids so you can line up your north, south, east, west, north, south, east, west, north, south, east, west. Okay, so we want to find the bearing from the ship to the port. So we draw a line. This is the direction we're looking for. And as Always in bearings, you start with zero at north. This is north. And start heading clockwise until you hit your direction. So in this case, again, we could take our protractor out and figure out what these angles are. But let's just assume, for argument's sake, this is 120 degrees, this is 90, and this is 30. Okay, and that is the bearing from here to here. And of course, as you saw from the above example, if you want to find the bearing from port to ship, you start again at north and you circle all the way around to you get here. And as you might have guessed, this will be 300 because it's 120 plus the 180 to get back around to the other end. So again, that's a brief review of bearings. Let's go to our first question, our first word problem. We have a hiker traveling four miles, leaves camp, travels four miles at a bearing of 50 degrees, then travels three miles at a bearing of 20 degrees. And again, these are navigation bearings, so you're gonna start at north 
and go east, you're not going to start uh, at the x-axis and go counterclockwise. So let's uh, draw a diagram so we know what we're working with. And let's put the campsite right down here. Here's the campsite and the hiker. Uh, let's make our grid so we know its direction. We have north, south, east, west. And the hiker traveled four miles at a bearing of 50 degrees. So remember, this is 50 degrees this way. And the bearing, so and he went or she went four miles okay and then stopped and turned and went three more miles at a bearing of 20 degrees so again here's the camper we want to start and draw a whole new set of grids okay this is north south again these are parallel this is east west these are parallel and they move 30 mi three miles at a bearing of 20 degrees so this is 20 degrees, so this is 50, and this is 20, and this is 3 miles, and here's our camper, and the, or hiker, and the hiker has decided to turn around and go back and wants to know what bearing should he or she take that would be straight back to camp. So we're looking for the direction of this side. So, um, as you saw in previous examples and videos, um, a good idea is to extract the triangle so we can figure out what we're looking for. So, and by the way, the camper hiker is here. Here's the hiker's new grid. And we're looking for what is the measure from here to here because that ultimately is the bearing that the hiker needs to take. So, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's extract the triangle. And we have ourselves this side, and we have this side, and we have this side, and this is four, this is three. And now we're going to use a little bit of geometry to figure out all these angles. Okay, down in this corner, this is uh, 50 degrees. Okay, that's not going to help us yet, uh, although it will help us in this manner. If this is 50 degrees, then this right here is also 50 degrees, okay? And if that's 50 degrees, then this must be 40 degrees. So we have 40 degrees there because it's complementary angle. And let's do the same thing up here. We have a 20 degree angle right here. So this is also 20 degrees, okay? And also this is 20 degrees, by the way. So this is 20 degrees. And this is 90 degrees. So look what we've got. We've got our included angle is 20 plus the 40 plus 90 is 150 degrees. And voila, we can now use law of cosines to find this length. And eventually we can use law of sines to find this angle. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, law of cosines. We're going to look for, uh, let's call this C. So C squared equals. 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4 times the cosine of C. Okay, and let's fill in all these values. So C squared is equal to 9 plus 16 minus 24 times the cosine of 150 degrees is, remember to use degrees, not radians is negative 0.866, okay? And to simplify quickly, times 24 plus 25 equals that. Six times 24 plus. We get, this is roughly 45.8. We'll take the square root. So C is equal to 6.7 seven okay and that seems pretty reasonable it's less than three and four okay so we actually know what the distance is back to camp that's one of our uh, I guess extra answers we're gonna give but we want to find what the bearing is so right now what do we have we have this is 90 degrees this is 180 this little piece right here 
we know is 20 degrees because this is op, uh, alternate interior angles. So we basically have 90, 90, 20, and we need to find this last piece right here. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use law of sines. Okay, so we're going to take the sine of 150 degrees over the opposite side, 6.77, and that must equal the sine of our theta we're looking for over 4. And quickly we'll use a calculator, sine of 150 degrees for you trig guys and gals is a half, 0.5. We'll cross multiply times 4 is 2 and so this is going to be 0.5 times 4 equals 6.77 sine theta and 0.2 divided by 6.77 and then we're going to take the inverse sine and this comes out to be 17.18 degrees. So that means this piece is 17.18 right here. This piece is 20 degrees because of alternate interior angles. Remember, these are parallel lines cut by a transversal. And then this, of course, is 180. So our final answer is going to be 90 plus 90 plus 20 plus 17. That is 217 and 18 degrees, 0.18 degrees. That is the bearing that the hiker should use to go directly back to camp. In this example, we have uh, boat A leaves uh, a dock and goes 30 miles due east. And at the same time, boat B goes 20 miles, leaves a dock, goes 20 miles at a bearing of 150 degrees. Uh, boat B gets into trouble, stranded, and calls for help. What bearing should boat A take to reach boat B? So again, this is a trigonometry, navigation, law of cosines, law of sines question. And uh, we'll just do as we did the other one. Uh, first thing I like to do is I like to draw a sketch. And I already got started here. Uh, here is our dock. And I draw the north, south, east, west grid. And boat A went 30 miles due east, which is a horizontal line to the right. Okay. And boat B is going to go 120 miles at a bearing of 150 degrees. And as you know, we started north. And we go 150, this is 90, 60. So 150 degrees is about, let's call this, okay, and this is 20 miles. And um, we want to know, this is A, and here's B. And we want to know what is the bearing that boat A should take to get to boat B. So we want to know how does it get there. And of course, we also need our grid. Here is where we are right now. And we are looking for, this is a horizontal line, and this is actually will be a little bit easier because it's a horizontal line. We're looking for the measure from this all the way around to here will give us the bearing that A should take to get to B. So let's use some uh, geometry first to start labeling our triangle. We have a 20 degree angle here. I'm sorry, we have a 20 miles is this side. 30 is this side. This angle right here is 90. This angle is 150. So what do we know? We know this is 60 degrees. Very important. So this is 60 degrees. This is 30 miles, 20 miles. And we want to find, actually, this will give us a quick uh, answer of what the distance is. Let's use law of cosines to find the distance from A to B. May as well add that to our uh, answer. And we know c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. That's law of cosines. OK, and let's start filling this. a squared is 20 squared plus 30 squared minus 2, 20, 30 cosine of 60 degrees. OK. And so this is 400 plus 900 is 1300 minus 1200 times cosine of 60 degrees, as everyone knows from uh, trigonometry, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, is one half. Therefore, 
c squared equals 700. So c is equal to, I'll pull out my calculator real quick. The square root of 700 is 26.46. Okay, so this is 26.46. And once we know that, we can use law of sines to find this angle. We're looking for this angle theta. The reason we want to know that angle theta is simply this. If we know what the angle here is, we know this whole thing is a right angle 90 degrees. Therefore, whatever this angle is, the remainder to get to 90 degrees will be this. And that's what we need to find out what the total bearing is from A to B. So let's use law of sines. Law of sines says sine, let's use C over C equals sine B over B. And let's go with, um, we have the sine of 60 degrees over 26.46 and we have the sine of this theta equal uh, over 20 okay and we'll cross multiply so we get sine theta equals 20 sine 60 over 26.46 and we'll take out the calculator so sine of 60 degrees Remember, use degrees is 0.866 times 20 is 17.3, and we'll divide that by 26.46 is 0.65. We'll take the inverse sine. So theta is 40.9. So theta is 40.9, and let's put that into our theta in the middle in our triangle. So this is 40.9. Therefore, this piece right here has to be. 49.1 because it is a complementary angle. So if this is 40.9.1, this is 180. Therefore, the bearing from A to B is 180 plus 49.1, which equals 229.1 degrees. So again, we'll do a quick check to make sure the work is correct. Uh, this is 49, this is 40.9, this is 60 degrees. This angle would be whatever remains from 180, which is 79.1, 139. And it makes sense. This should be the biggest angle across from the biggest side. And this is the middle angle across from the middle side and the smallest angle from the smallest side. So that seems reasonable. And the distance seems about reasonable. 26 seems about right. And the measurement of degrees is 229.1, which also seems correct for our bearing.